Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is indeed an honor for me to introduce our pastor today. His name is Bud Womack. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce his wife, Miss Faye Womack, and his daughter, Kelsey, his youngest daughter. Would y'all please stand up and join me in welcoming them? <laughs> Reverend Womack resides in America with his wife, Faye. Um, and Reverend Womack have been married for over 30 years and have two daughters and a son-in-law. Their youngest daughter, whom you just met, uh, Kelsey, is 19 years old and a freshman at Georgia Southwestern State University. Uh, that school uh, is dear to me because my wife teaches there. Their oldest daughter, Kayla, is 25 years old and married to Mr. Earl Purdue, uh, Purdue Dupree, excuse me, both of which serve as educators in Sly County. Uh, Reverend Womack has served as the lead pastor at Life Point Church for over 20 years and is a district overseer for the Church of God. For the past 15 years, he's served as chaplain for the Sumter County Sheriff's Office and for the past three years as chaplain for the Georgia State Patrol in our area. He enjoys deer and rabbit hunting and being involved in the local community and especially pastoring Life Point Church. And I'd like to say a few things on a personal note about Reverend Bud. I, I met him several years ago, and um, I think the greatest thing I can say about him is he is a true friend. Um, with the expression, uh, uh, a friend in need is a friend indeed, rings true to me because there have been many times in the past few years when I've called on Reverend Bud um, when I had difficulties, and he was always there for me. So, uh, Reverend Bud, thank you from me personally. And uh, please join me in having Reverend Bud deliver our message today. Thank you, Mr. Chokas, for the invitation, and thank you for allowing me to be here today. I want to speak to you this morning briefly on the thought that you're living in a blessed field. David recorded this in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 18. He said, open my eyes, Lord, open my eyes to see the wonderful truth in your instructions. I want you to zero in on the part that says, open my eyes. I want to share a story with you this morning. It's a story that was first told by Mr. Russell Conwell. He heard this story from an Arab guide that he had when he was traveling the Middle East on camelback in the 1800s. Mr. Conwell took the story, he put it in a pamphlet, and over time had sold over 7 million copies of this story. It's a true story of a man named Ali Afid. He was a poor farmer. He took on new ground. That new ground was rough. He had an ox, he had a, a plow, he had some untouched farmland, and he had a little house. For the most part, Mr. Afid was completely content with where he was and what he was doing and how life was going. But then one day a traveler came by and suggested to Mr. Afid that he find a place in India because they were finding diamonds in India. With that being said to him, he kissed his wife and kids goodbye. He moved to India, left enough money to take care of his children, and his wife assured them that he'd be back. He said, I'll be back, and when I get back, we're going to be rich. After selling his farm, he did just that. He searched, and he searched, and he searched, and he never found any diamonds in India. They were not to be found where he went. With that being done and being said, Mr. Afid wrote a note, a letter back to his home, told them there was nothing there. He jumped into a raging river and took his own life. The rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say it, is that the man that bought the old farm from Mr. Afid, he was plowing it. And while he plowed, he had the same ox, the same plow, the same old untouched field and the same little house. 
he kept running into these little rocks in the field. And he kept throwing the rocks out of the way until one day the plow hit a rock he couldn't move. And he had to take a, a mallet, a hammer, and bust that rock up. When he busted that rock, he noticed some really beautiful rainbow colors on the inside. He grabbed that rock, washed it off, and put it on the mantle in his home. A few days later, a priest came by to visit him. When he came by to pay him that visit, he asked him in mid-sentence, My Lord, where did you get that? He said, Man, that rock took me a day and a half to bust up. I couldn't get it out of the way. And I opened it up and seen how pretty it was. I just washed it off and put it on the mantle. He said, You don't understand. That's not just any rock. He said, That is a diamond in the rough. And he said, My Lord, there's rocks like that all over the place. I got them stacked and piled on the other end of the field down at the bottom. Sure enough, they had the rock checked out, and in the late 1800s, that one rock was valued at over $25,000. It became one of the birthplaces of the world's largest diamond field. Now, my wife showed me a sign one day when I was preaching and she picked it up and it said K-I-S-S -S. and I thought that's mighty sweet after church she told me it didn't mean she loved me as much as it did keep it short stupid so I'm going to keep it a little short for you hopefully this morning some of you may represent places that somebody else may have given up on but you're living in a blessed field you may not think that you've got a whole lot but you're living in a blessed field. You may not think that the, the smell is that good. you got to walk behind an old ox, but I want to tell you, you're living in a blessed field. Just under the surface of the land that God is allowing you to be a representative of is diamonds in the rough, wealth untold, prosperity you've never touched, things nobody's ever seen, ability that nobody's ever reached, Things that people would never dream could happen, could happen in your field. Don't give up. Don't back down. Don't slow up. Don't back away. Don't take no for an answer. Keep pushing. Keep plowing. You may be looking at an old plow. It may look like ground that's never been touched. It may feel like something you'll never be able to accomplish. But I just wanted to come by Atlanta, Georgia today to tell you, keep plowing. Keep pushing. Keep digging, keep hitting, keep praying, keep talking, keep loving, keep working. Hold your head up, keep pushing. Don't let anything or anybody tell you you can't. Many years ago when I was a young guy, just felt called to preach, I had a relative tell me that I should never say that I'm a preacher. She said, don't say that. And I said, why? She said, just tell them you're going to speak. I said, why? She said, because nobody in our family has ever been a preacher. And I said this, well, maybe some people still don't think I'm a preacher after 30-something years of preaching, but that's okay too. I know where God's placed me. I know what God's told me to do. And I want to remind you, i got to remember I'm not in church. I'm at the state capitol. <laughs> Sometimes I get to feeling what I'm saying, if you know what I mean. Don't give up. The state of Georgia is rich ground. It's fertile ground. The place you represent, the district you're from, it's fertile ground. Stay in it. Keep putting your hand to the plow. Keep busting up the rocks. You just keep taking care of what God's entrusted you with and let God bring the diamonds up. Just under the surface of what somebody else has said is useless ground, God has placed you there, and he's just fixing to pour blessings up right up under your feet. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. And God, some people may say that's crazy because it's cloudy outside, but I remember who made the clouds. And Lord, you said this is a day that we ought to rejoice and be glad in, because you made it. So we're thankful for a Friday in Atlanta, Georgia, where legislation comes together in the great state of Georgia to be able to bring things about, create laws, pass that legislation 
that would help the people not only of this state, that could help people all over this world. God, I ask that you bless every representative that's in this room. I pray, God, for their districts that they're from and that they represent. God, that they would be reminded that there's diamonds in their field, that they're living in a blessed field, that they're serving in a blessed field, they're working in a blessed field. Father, I pray that as they travel, you would show them mercy on the road and protection on the road. I pray, God, that you would make our minds fixed and set on the things that would bring you glory and honor. And God, that you would, like David said in the book of Psalms, open up our eyes to see the things that you've got for us. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.